What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Talk Talk Punch. I am Brody, joined by Two Dong Dylan and hey. the lucky day of our three amigos, Charlie Hicks. Hey, hey. <laughs> always shoot Thank to the sky. Guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us. While you're here, we'd love to interact with you, so make sure you come. Just be nice about it. And then whether you're watching us on YouTube or listening in on the audio version of the podcast, wherever you might be podcast, make sure you go ahead and hit that thumbs up, hit the star rating, and then subscribe, or else Dylan is going to come to your house and it's going to unload your dishwasher. You're going to think it's a favor, uh, but then he's going to put all the dishes back in the wrong place. I knew it. I knew that you're, there was a You're catch. not going to know where anything is. Nothing. You're going to have a big holiday meal, and you're not going to know where the pie server is. You're not going to know how to make brownie. It's a horrible scenario. Terrible. Horrible. So you need to subscribe. Off a favor and subscribe. And then come back here every Wednesday to hang out with us and see what we're talking about. Kind of like this week's topic. We are going over 2023. It's a new year. Fellas, it's yeah. 2023. Can you believe That's it? it? Right? I, I don't cannot. believe it. So we're gonna go over. We got happens. some. We got some challenges for each other. For <laughs> we're gonna go over our most anticipated thing. We're gonna go. We're gonna revisit last year's predictions. Mm -hmm. Predictions when we go last year. So visit those. See how we did. And then we <laughs> have new predictions for this. It's going to be a good, good time. Fellas, how do you feel? Tired. But I, uh, you know, hey, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's basically already 2024, right? We, uh, we made it. <laughs> so we've skipped this year, apparently. We've skipped the year. Uh, year if, only. <laughs> if only. Here we go. Off to a good nice. start. Hey, oh, I right. feel good. If I sound echoey, folks at home, it's because I've just kind of moved and there's nothing in here to absorb any sound. So I, if I sound terrible, I apologize. Yeah, That's Dylan, it, Dylan is still here, even though he's actively moving. He's, <laughs> he's in his new place. He's got no furniture. He's got bare floors no and bare walls. Mm -hmm. No Wi-Fi, so it's all data. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, be a, that'll be a nice bill when you get it at the end. That's, yeah. <laughs> it's all for you folks at home, though. It's all for you folks at home. And so, be, and so be patient with us. Be patient mm -hmm. with poor Two Dog. He's right in the middle of moving. <laughs> There's people, like, bringing his stuff in right now as we're speaking. He stopped. He's like, I can't, I can't do it. I got to record. <laughs> right. His all poor wife is moving no stuff right now. Picturing, picturing like the infant daughter, like trying to lift edge, like ends of couches. And stuff. She's holding up just a huge box, just in her hand. She's like, "This is no problem." Just that is strong, right baby. <laughs> Move that box of comic books. Yeah, now you're talking. <laughs> All right. All don't... right. Well, we've got our 2023 with Talk Talk Punch. Here we hey. are. Here we are. And but to start out, us. to start out, we've got some challenges for each other. We did this, probably when did we do this? Two years ago? I think it was two years ago, and it took us two, two years, years to do the challenge. So <laughs> we did it, though. We did it. We did it. Well, I did mine within. The oh, well, well. You did well. not, Charlie. I had, well. I had to go to Charlie's house. I had to, <laughs> I challenged him to watch Interstellar two years ago. I had to buy the movie myself and fly down to his house to make him watch it. <laughs> That's really challenging. You made it really challenging. Hey, there. Don't, don't challenge me to watch things that aren't on the streaming service that I have because I ain't going to do it. But I do appreciate you putting your money literally where your mouth was, picking up the DVD, flying it down here. It was well worth the trip. Uh, and it was, it was a, a very good movie. So good on you. Nice. <laughs> All right, so our order for tonight is going to be Two Dong starting us out, and then it's going to be Charlie, and then it's going to be. So, Two Dong, what's your yes. challenge for us for 2023? My challenge for you guys is actually a health challenge. And, folks, this would be a good challenge for you to do at home as well. Can you hear me? Yeah. You hear me, right? Okay, cool. 
basically it is the Wim Hof method. It is a breathing method and it actually goes along with things like cold showers, ice baths, and all these other things to make us feel like we're young again. And it actually kind of works. I had a bad knee and my knee was, at, it's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. Everything is falling apart. But this is, I'll, I'm not saying ice bath. I'm not saying you got to do all of those kinds of crazy, or I'm not even saying you should do a, a cold shower technique. All I'm saying is to learn the technique, the breathing technique. And I'm not qualified to teach it. You can see it on YouTube. There's a Wim Hof cha uh, channel. And all I'm saying is learn the actual technique of the breathing technique. And then, you know, you don't have to do cold showers, but try doing that for at least 10 days, the breathing technique, in the morning. Can I ask you a question, Dylan? Yeah. Is that your head in the bottom right corner of the picture? <laughs> no, that is not. That's, uh, that's actually Wim Hof. Oh, all right. Uh, so Dylan's not allowed to reveal who that was. So <laughs> big, that, big that. Wim Hof stepped in and put a put a kibosh on that, but not letting him reveal no, no, no. the secret. The shoulder, the shoulder is the guy Wim Hof. Like it's just a, a shoulder? shoulder. That's a shoulder. It's it's he's European, so he's like nice and clean. I don't know if he's clean shaven, but he's he's in excellent condition. <laughs> European Europeans famously clean shaven on the shoulders. Very uh, clean shaven. Hey, we don't want to promote stereo hurtful stereotypes here. Dylan. Definitely no. But he, for some reason, is he's in excellent shape. That's his shoulder. His face is like actually where like the M is. Or the F, the M. It's above that. So, but I, I, I wanted to. Fit I do not in there see a face there. where the M is. Brody, do you see a face where I don't the see M any is? Faces. Okay. I had to cut the picture down. Oh, I can already right. tell you guys aren't going to I thought this. you meant there was a face in the M, and I was like, all right, oh, no. I'm looking real hard here, but I don't see a it's face in the M. It's up by it. It's up by it. It's not. You have to do the breathing it. technique, and then you see the face in the M. That's right. That's it. <laughs> At, right before you black out, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, well, you'll black out, then you'll see a lot of other things. So it's, it's, it's not very vigorous. It's not bad. You can even follow along on the, it'll take 10 minutes. You can even follow along with the guided breathing on the YouTube. Ten minutes of your life for ten days. No cold showers. I'm not saying that. Of course, that's part of the I, I want I want Brody to live stream an ice bath. Is is what I want. Uh, Don't do that, bro. Put put on a speedo and some goggles and and maybe like I don't. Do you do you tie the beard with like a rubber band when you go swimming? Yeah. Not when I go swimming. Not normal. Okay. Oh, Ooh. And, and then just dip into an ice bath live live on hey, do it for the show. Do it for the people. No one wants to see that. I wouldn't mind seeing that. All right. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see Brody do an ice bath. Yeah. That is an interesting challenge, too dong. I'm gonna look into it. It's going to make you guys feel better because both of you guys talk about feeling horrible all the time. So I, I don't want to do talk something. about feeling horrible all the time. You do. You talk about feeling horrible. You say you 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 feel miserable and you hate everything and everybody. Your body's falling to pieces. <laughs> All right. Challenge accepted. All right. All right, Charlie. Okay. Was that was well, that well, eye roll, Two Dog? I saw. That it. was an eye roll. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I I hate. I heard one person say they accept the challenge. That's the eye roll. That's all. Hey, I want to <laughs> hear. I want to. I want all the other challenges revealed before I start committing to challenges. I'm not committing to challenges until my challenge has been committed to. All right. Well, what's your challenge, Charlie? All right. Uh, my challenge is uh, a little less uh, of a of a make your life better kind of way. Uh, Dylan very thoughtfully trying to help and trying to heal. Uh, and I suppose I kind of went the opposite direction of that, uh, where I wanted to have a little bit of fun with you two. Uh, you can you can slide me up here, bro. Uh, we are going to... <laughs> now, I'm not going to make you watch this movie, but you are going to tell me the streaming services that you have. And then I'm going to find a bad movie that's on those streaming services. And you guys are going to watch it. And let me tell you, you're going to watch it. No cell phone in the hand. No scrolling, no you know reading a comic book while you do it. Eyes laser focused on the movie, with a pad of paper and a pencil <laughs> or pen in hand. And there's going to be a grading system. <laughs> We're going to mark down every time we roll our eyes. We're going to mark down every time we audibly groan. 
We're going to mar mark down every time something's supposed to be funny and it makes us angry instead of laugh. <laughs> we're going to write down every time we laugh at something that is not funny. And we're going to write down every pure moment of joy that might occur during the film. Because you never know. There might be a few pure moments of joy. So we're going to have a whole, a whole grading system. Okay. Uh, it's going to be delightful. Uh, and then we, we could even do an episode where you guys recap your, your, your love of those, we should. of those movies. Let me tell you something. You, I'm gonna pick. I'm not gonna pick the worst ones. I'm gonna pick watchable movies for you guys because I love you. And 2023, it's all about. It's about the love, man. <clears throat> Don't worry. Hey, it's gonna be good stuff. Charlie, you're I'll doing this too, watch right? The same movie. Yeah. I if Dylan breathes, then I'll, I'll do this. Yeah. Are we watching the same movie? Like Brody and I both have Hulu. But if so you guys you. both have, if you guys have, both have the same streaming service and would like to watch a movie, that's great. Uh, if we, if you want individually curated movies that I think will appeal to your particular sensibilities, then we could do that way too. Broad, what do you think? I think we could turn this into an episode. I think this would be a okay. I agree. All right, I'm gonna make Brody watch cats. All right, so what's uh, <coughs> you love cats, Brody? Yes, though I did just show my daughter the trailer. actual cat. She watched it and she was like, <laughs> I believe that's the first <laughs> line of the trailer. If you like actual cats, you're gonna love these crazy kittens. <laughs> I was just thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My challenge for you guys, because I I still enjoy going to the. Oh no! You can't challenge me to leave the it. house. You guys you can't do it. You can't do you it. Guys, you guys used to love going to the movies. We used to see so many movies together back in the day, and then. I, I believe it. Away. I believe it was. Away. You ruined it. <laughs> you ruined it. You can't blame that all on. I I think I it was. You realize it, bro. I don't know if you realize it, but Charlie and I have seen movies after you moved away in Who's movie right? theaters. In fact, we've seen Marvel movies. We saw Civil War in theaters. Without me? Was that the last one? That was the last one we saw in theaters, right? You got to you got to come down. All right, hey, okay. So finish your challenge, and then we'll, okay. we'll rap okay. you about it. So my <laughs> challenge for you is to go see three movies in the theater this year. Three? I thought you were going to say one, and I was like, okay, one. Three, three movies. <laughs> there are so many, there are so many okay. good movies coming out in theaters. Three movies. I'd and rather take the ice bath than do the, than do the three <laughs> movie theater challenge. Charlie, I know that there's multiple movies that are coming out that you're very excited for. I know that for a fact. Oh, there are. I have a list of 10 uh, that I had to narrow down to one for my most anticipated. <laughs> but of those 10, I might see one in the theater. It's possible to. It's possible to. I don't know if I can get to three, bro. I got to be honest. I'm looking what? at the I don't, I don't know if I can get to three. I think you can. Three. That's like every four months. One movie okay. every four months? Do we have two years for this like we, we did the last challenge? If we <laughs> no, have two years, I no, got no. This, this year, this year. 2023. <laughs> three movies. In I All saw right. like five or six in the I at least went every other month. Yeah, but yeah. But you live in Reno. Like movies cost like a dollar where you live. <laughs> 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 I wish. And I just went for California inflation. It cost me forty five dollars just to park at the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are, it is expensive. All right. How about That's... every person that I that I pay for in my family to see the movie counts? So if I take like Jeez. my wife and four kids, then <laughs> I, that counts as me having gone to see five movies. I don't know. No. Okay. <laughs> Right. I'm gonna try. I can't Brody, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try, Brody. I'm gonna try. And then if we see him in theaters, then we can have like a review episode. We don't often get That's to do point. review episodes because a lot of times we don't watch movies until they come up <laughs> streaming. Which we can do streaming reviews. Let us know in the comments. Would you still be interested in watching us do after a movie? I think hey, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's a good idea. Streaming so like review, yeah. People do streaming reviews. We could even review movies that go straight to streaming, like we could have done, uh, you know, like The Gray Man or The Adam Project. 
yeah. true. Glass Onion had a very limited release. We could have done Glass Onion. So there you go. There's my challenge. Great movie. All right. In the thing. Okay. Oh, boy. All right. So I challenge you guys to watch a silly movie that's going to be a fun night. And now I've got to go take ice cold showers for 10 days while bleeding <laughs> and go spend $1,000 to see three movies in the theater. Okay. All right. All right. Next year, the challenge won't be so silly, boys. <laughs> I challenge you to watch 24 seasons of Bob's Burgers. Bro. Oh, my. 24 <laughs> seasons. Year. Every episode that exists, I want, I want you to watch. All right. Hey, fine. Fine. That's good. See a matinee. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, next up, we have our most anticipated movie or show, I guess, of 2023. <laughs> wait, wait, or show? Now you don't no, you remember or show? That. Okay, that, that I never most heard. anticipated movie of 2023. <laughs> Charlie, I always just assume that you're going to pick a show for anything I that I say. I play the movie game. I, I love movies. I'm a movie guy. I... I send out texts and Charlie's like, can I pick a, can I pick a show? And I'm like, sure. I'm going to have to incorporate it into the title now. All right. But All sure. Right. All right. All right. But sometimes <laughs> the topics are too narrow to just be about movies. All right. Anyway, Dylan, what's your most anticipated? My most anticipated. You can throw the slide up, bro. My most anticipated is Creed 3. I, directed by Michael B. Jordan, starring Michael B. Jordan, uh, Tessa Thompson as his wife. Uh, Jonathan Majors. Now, I have to admit, I was about to pick Ant-Man and the quant uh, is Quantum Quantumania. Quantumania. Quant Quantumania. I was going to choose that. And then I was like, I saw the trailer for Creed 3 and Michael B. Jordan's directing it. And he's just a great actor. And so is Tess Thompson. But man, Jonathan Majors looked huge in this. I, it <laughs> looks like it's going to... And he is an unbelievable actor. I can't wait to see him as a bad guy in a, one of the Rocky spinoff movies. Cannot wait. I've always loved the Rocky movies. And you know what? This is going to be one of my three movies that I watch in the theater right here. In fact, this will probably be the first because it comes out March 3rd, uh, 2023, which is this year now. But yeah, this, this uh, it looked, I didn't know what they were going to do. I was hoping they weren't going to do like, now it's Mr. T's son is going to come and, you know, all that kind of thing. We get a pretty Ricky Conlon in, in the... I didn't actually see him in the trailer. People were like, oh, yeah, he's in there. And I'm like, he is? But he's coming back. I thought he was a really fun bad guy. And uh, I'm, like I said, I like... I love the character of Apollo Creed and just going through with his son and have it being a great actor like Michael B. Jordan. And, like again, Jonathan Majors as a bad guy, boxer. Ah, oh, just... That's perfect. I love it. Cannot wait for it. <laughs> I still have not seen. Have you seen? <clears throat> have you seen all the other Rocky movies, bro? Yes, I really want to see. I really want to see these. Okay, I really want to see these. And you I, should. And, They're and really the, good. Creed Two is streaming someplace. I don't remember which one. Maybe HBO, I, I, I Amazon. It's, or something. It might, it's, it's either Amazon Prime or it's Hulu because I've even seen it on there. One of those. But the first one isn't streaming anywhere. This yeah, first one's not true. streaming anywhere. And so I can't go watch the second one without seeing the first one. But I'm like, that's let very... it stream someplace so that I can watch this doggone movie. I don't know what's I going on. You can watch it. I believe you can watch it on TBS.com. It says For watch free. on TBS. Go to TBS.com. Watch on TBS.com. For free? Uh, look, I have not clicked the link. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not going to go surf in TBS.com while I'm invested and engaged That's in a, a podcast point. with you two. But if it's I'm on TBS, to, it I'm should. You can, you, you've got to have to look for it, bro. If it's to. on TBS, it should be on HBO. They're all owned by that pair. The, the first one, the first one was better than the second one. But I mean, the first one was really, really good. Like uh, Stallone got an Oscar nomination for his portrayal of Rocky. I can't believe he didn't win. That's ridiculous. But these are really good, bro. I highly recommend them. Seek so they them keep out. hearing, and they keep making more of them. And I'm like, I can't watch any of these until I see the first one. You, you got to, you got to seek them out, like Charlie just did seconds ago. Seconds. He found it in seconds. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just pay to rent it. Okay. There you pay go. Pay for quality. All right. Good All pick, right. Tudong. All right, Charlie. I, uh, as you. You guys probably didn't know this about me, especially uh, those of you who are watching. Uh, I I don't go to the theater very often to see movies. 
uh it's a little known fact uh you know and i i but you guys know me i'm all about the theater experience all i want to do is go to the theater and but every now and then it gets a little bit tricky with uh with the family and life and jobs and and you know things so every now and then i get to i get the privilege of seeing a movie with my kids and a lot of times they're fun you know detective pikachu the sonic movies we have a good time and then every now and then we see a movie together and there's some kind of magic in the movie that it's like I'm watching them fall in love with watching movies. And it like, so not only am I enjoying the movie experience, but like there's something, I don't, transcendent seems like too strong a word, but there's just some, there's like a, a bigger experience happening where there's like this kind of bond that we're sharing over a movie that we're just kind of like, we're falling in love with movies. Movies are big, big and magical and just stretch the imagination and sometimes stretch the heart. And for us, uh, the first time I really felt like that in the theater with my kids was watching Into the Spider-Verse. And it was just like mind blowing. It was just fun. And my kids were, their eyes were huge. And we just all had a blast. And I, I loved it. Uh, one of my favorite movies afterwards, all my kids wanted to do was be Spider-Man. They're running around, they're, they're jumping on everything they can find, they're climbing walls. And it was just magic. And, and so this year uh, we get across the Spider-Verse coming to the theater, which I am just legit excited for, even if my kids are all decide they hate Spider-Man. And my, but my, my three-year-old, just loves Spidey. And we watch a show called Spidey and Friends on Disney Plus with Spidey and Spin and Ghost Spider. And he just adores it. We got a bunch of like Spidey toys for Christmas. So I cannot wait to take him to his first movie across the Spider-Verse, possibly Mario now that I have to see three. Uh, and just have that like really cool kind of like like neat little movie experience with my with my my three boys. Uh, my you know, my daughter's a little too young to enjoy it. But my three boys, I'm really excited to watch this specifically with them. And, I, you know, these days, like, movies, I'm, I'm excited. For, I got, like, ten movies on my list. I cannot wait to see Cocaine Bear, a movie about a bear who consumes a bag of cocaine. Are you kidding me? Put Inject that straight into my veins. I want to watch it. There's so many movies I want to see this year. But, man, a movie like this that I can really kind of share and bond with my kids over, I'm just I'm, – I'm over the moon. I think it's going to be fantastic, and I can't wait to see where this – kind of in, incarnation of spider-man kind of keeps continuing to evolve uh and go i mean i'm just excited for it it's gonna be great and this is just part one they keep making them they can, they I thought this is part two this part, part one of uh across the spider-verse like dave reckoning part one for mission impossible oh uh, i get it well maybe, maybe there'll be nine parts it's possible. They could. They could. Make... Parts. All right. So well, cool. Charlie, that me. that was a a great segue for me because my most anticipated. Now, I I still enjoy going. I don't get out as much as I. But I I do enjoy it, especially for the big spectacle movies. And so I was going through some of the stuff I was really anticipating. We've got a new Christopher Nolan movie coming out. This one, the Spider-Man, we've got Marvel movies coming out. We've got the new Dune. We've got Jones. <clears throat> but the one that, that I most anticipate going to see in theaters, so excited for, is actually the new Mission Impossible. Because these movies are those types of movies that are so much better in because yeah. it's huge and you get the giant sound system, you get the the DTX and things like that. That just it's not something that you can replicate house, and it it just makes the experience so much better to watch this type of movie. so. Of all the movies, and even I'm not just saying just uh, I'm anticipating it just because it's theatrical, but I'm really looking forward to this because I have like my love of the Mission Impossible movie has continued to grow over the year to where now it's I I get really excited when they announce a new one. Okay, it's coming, and it's become kind of this like event for me. I love going to see it. So excited to see them, and they just feel so 
I don't know. It's, it's like this event of like a new Mission Impossible movie. It's going to be a new story and get more crazy Tom Cruise stuff. Charlie, you were talking about the Tom Cruise going off the jump with the motorbike and the parachute. And I went and I watched that. And I showed my kids that. And they're like, that looks so cool. So it just, I'm like, I'm really, really looking. Forward. I think more than anything else this year, even, even all the Marvel movies, stuff like that, like a new Mission Impossible. So this, this. I like it. I like it too. This That's will probably good, be my third. Good. This will probably be the third one I go see. This when does it come out? Oh. End of the year, right? No, no. summer, summer. July. No, I think it's like July, June. July 2nd. June 2nd? July 2nd. June or July? Uh, June. I'll look it up. Bing it, Charlie. Bing it. I'm binging it <laughs> as we speak. All right. But yeah. It'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be good. Yeah. All right. So now, if you watched last year's episode, we gave some predictions. And so we thought, you know what? Let's go back. Let's see how our predictions played out. Did they come true? Were we it's even like close? Anime, by the way. End of May. End of May. Oh, end of May. I said June. Yeah, we did. We did. So how did our predictions play out? Were we correct? Did what we predict actually happen? See. So I just took the slides from last year. So Tudong, you predicted yeah. that Nathan Fillion will be recognized as the glorious film actor that he is. And Charlie and I tried to and quantify now, that. Now, as technically speaking, technically speaking, it came true because I definitely recognize him that way. So technically, <laughs> at least partially, get partial credit because i recognized him that way well then charlie and i tried to try to figure out what you what you meant by this and how we could measure this how is this a measurable so we said okay oh, so like, obviously so is he gonna be like the the main star of a blockbuster movie oh he has been it's, it's been great it's fantastic in all of the leads that he's been in <laughs> So, so Dylan, would you say that your prediction came true? My prediction did not come true. Ah, uh, you're breaking, you're breaking up, you're breaking up a little. We, we don't have to, we don't have to hear him admit it. We, we all know. Poor Nathan Fillion. But maybe this is the year he lands that dream role. Could be. Well, he's gonna be, they, ca he's gonna be cast in the new uh, Fantastic Four or X Men movie or something. Join the MCU. This could be the year. Oh, they they cast Wonder Man. We can see you now. They cast Wonder Man. All right, so so Dylan you can't win them all. You can't win them all. So Dylan, how how do you feel about this one? Now that we can see you in here, he's gonna get there. He's a young young up and coming actor. He's gonna make his mark. He's gonna unbelievable. Am I frozen again? It's ridiculous. <laughs> No, we can, so we can see you. We can see you. How does it keep freezing on? I like that the clearest part of everything that Dylan's saying oh. is the rant about how he's frozen. Everything else is kind of hard to hear, but as soon as he's like, ah, ah frozen, ah, it's all like crystal. But now he's frozen, though. All right, should we go on to uh, to my my? All prediction? right. So, Charlie, your prediction is just a poster. I don't remember exactly what your prediction was about Avatar 2, but it was about Avatar 2. I, I look, it wasn't, since we're not doing bold predictions, I didn't say Avatar 2 would bomb. But what I did say is that it would underperform expectations. And I thought it would be, it would underwhelm. And let me tell you, when it opened, it looked like pretty strong call by this guy right here. But it has had some legs and it is uh, holding up quite well after a few weeks. But man, that's a mammoth budget to make back. So we'll, we'll jury's out, jury's out, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if those legs continue to carry all the way through January. Um, let us, you know, did you guys see Avatar 2? Let us know in the comments below. I, it's, this is just a movie that I just have no interest in seeing, and that could just be bias. And you could tell me I'm wrong and that the movie is fantastic and that I should see it. And I will honor, uh, I, I, this probably won't be one of my three, but I'll, I'll watch it eventually, right? I don't know. Uh, are you guys going to see this? Is this on your list of, of get, get twos? I, I actually already saw it in theaters. <laughs> Oh man, 
You just you only saw that despite my prediction. You're trying to you're trying to make me look bad on the Talk Talk Punch New Year's episode, Brody. That's no, not cool. I did. Unbelievable. We went with a did group not, on on New Year's. Did you Eve. watch it in IMAX? Did you watch it in IMAX? No, we didn't watch it at IMAX. Okay. All we right. went to like the the DTX theater, so it's not like a super sound system. Bigger. Was it good? I, yeah, I enjoyed it. Okay. No, you didn't. Pro, no, you didn't. Pro tip, yes, pro tip for those for who, who don't know Brody's voice and mannerisms. When he says that in that tone, it means he didn't really like it that much, but he's trying to be nice. That's, no, that's, I enjoyed yeah. it. His voice goes up. You hear his like, pitch jump an octave. Yeah, that was good. I liked it. It was good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was good, Charlie. I enjoyed it. It was oh, good. Oh, there's, the mass, there's the beard voice that we know and love. Lover Jack Brody. <laughs> All right. Well, when, when when the show wraps, you can give me your honest review of Avatar 2. Oh, I enjoyed it. <laughs> it was it was worth seeing the theaters? I thought so. You're going to see it. Probably the way to go is the theater experience. Yeah. You, big. Visually, holy smokes. James Cameron knows. knows. Story-wise, a couple things I didn't understand, but all right. <laughs> that is all right. It's all right. right. That's so for my prediction, I went pretty specific. I said, Disney Plus is going to merge with another streaming platform and will include more adult content. I'm going to give myself what? half credit for this. While they didn't merge with something, they do include adult content now. There are things that are rated That's R true. on Disney Plus. We have things That's like true. Deadpool. Daredevil series was well, yeah, the Daredevil series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That stuff, that other stuff. But yes, so I'm I'm giving myself half credit. I I thought maybe they were going to merge with Hulu. I didn't want to be too exact. Is then I think you might I think you might have just been a year early. I think that that merger could happen this year. I'm really, right. really curious to see it. So I should have made that prediction. I should have just said that. That would be. Then I would have. Yeah. Bang. On Showtime me. and Paramount Plus are going to be uh, merging. We got a lot of. There's a lot of interesting. A lot to, we should do a whole episode on some of the interesting things that are changing in the world of streaming. Yeah. <laughs> we've we've got a couple yeah. conversation episodes coming up. Where we're just going to talk about some. loose format, yeah. folks. We don't have to do. Strong Keep it loose. Point. Keep it fresh. Yeah, just have conversations. Yeah. It's a good point. It's a good point. All right. So now we have our 2023 prediction. All right. Tudong, what's happening this year? This year, Nathan Lillian is going to have a knockout at the box office. And I a knockout at the box office. That he a knockout at the box office. Now, I don't care if that means in one of the movies he's in, somebody in the face knocking them out, or if it actually just does well at the box office. So, like, if he That's stars pretty- in, like, uh, the next Suicide Squad movie, which I don't think is, it's not scheduled to come out, as, like, the weasel guy, and it makes a lot of money, would that he- count? Well, he wasn't the weasel guy, but yeah, I mean, if it makes Oh, sense. he was the he arm was guy. I'm sorry. He was the, the yeah, arm guy. He was the arm guy. Yeah. So, I mean, technically, technically, that came out this year, didn't it? Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad. Because technically, then my prediction would be, uh, well, maybe not. That's still it, it, it didn't come out this year. Uh, the, like, but to be fair, there haven't been a lot of movies yet. It's only January 2nd. So. That's also true. Last year, last year. Jeez. That's also true. That's but I'm true. also going to say, yeah. even if he's not in a, an, a, a, even if he doesn't knock out the box office, in, in somewhere in the box office, he's going to be in a movie where he does punch somebody. And he doesn't normally do that. So he, both of those might be completely wrong. But I'll stand by Nathan Fillion. How high that punch. There's a reason. He- yeah. That that punch, he's but like no, no. he's he, he's hitting that guy in the forehead. He's high up, but he's hitting 
He's hitting him downwards. He's hitting him down. He's even like he's, he's coming over on the top. He's doing a Mike Tyson punch. He's knocking this fool out in one hit, Mike Tyson style. I'm not talking about his form, and I love the fact that it looks like he's blowing the guy a kiss or about to just kiss him. <laughs> All right. So, so Dylan, is this going to be every year we're going to get a Nathan Fillion prediction? Until it absolutely comes true or he's a guest on this podcast, yes, absolutely. Until he actually is like, you don't need to keep doing predictions with me in them, or it just comes true, absolutely. I, my, my predictions will be Nathan Fillion centric. Maybe this year he's getting married. Maybe next year he's going to be filmed by the paparazzi doing something. I don't know. I don't know. I got to keep thinking about them, but it'll definitely be Nathan Fillion centric. Which I actually said last year. Last year I was like, this is going to be my prediction from now on. But I got to vary it up a little bit. I got to make it a little bit more fun. I did have to ask for specific and... <laughs> well, That's true. Just, All right, Charlie. Any, any projects that I can see, so this is, this is going to... It's a bold call. All right, Brody, I will attempt to... So get there. To kind of we- weave my way to a measurable and specific prediction. Okay. Okay. But I'd like to start with asking if you guys have any predictions as to what the domestic yearly box office take was for 2022. Uh, full no, just, domestic? Full no, total gross. And so just for just for frame of reference, uh in the year 2020, uh it was only 2 uh, it was like 2 billion, but in the year 2019 it was 11 billion. There's a little something that happened in 2020, you guys may remember. Uh, 2021, it jumped to four billion, and so just so the last three years, eleven, two, four. I'm gonna I say, would guess I'm gonna say eight. Eight. I was gonna guess eight too. Those are good guesses. Well, right? luckily for me, I was fast. Seems to be what doubling. Uh, according to Box Office Mojo, which Brody likes to use, uh, seven point three for the year 2022. <sighs> so we were close. We were close. But so a, a cor- bit. A bit According to Price is Right rules, we both went over. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You guys overshot your wad, and that's, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, it's better to overshoot than undershoot, I've always so, been told. So this was, this was an underwhelming year by predictions and by, I think, what, what people were hoping to see in terms of bounce back uh, for post-COVID, which is such a weird term, but post, you know, post the shutdowns and things like that. Uh, and this was really buoyed by Top Gun, which domestically made 718 by itself, which uh, 718 million by itself, which is phenomenal. Uh, four movies in 2022, including Top Gun, made 400 million or more. Can you name the other three? Came out this. All right. Well, what you guys think about that? Black Panther. Black, Black Panther? Panther is one of them. Number, came in second at 436 million. Oh, oh, the Batman. The Batman did not cross the 400 million threshold domestically. Really? Ah. Yeah. Wow. It, it came in uh, actually seventh underneath Minions, The Rise of Gru. So um, the other two were Doctor Strange, The Multiverse of Madness, and Avatar. Oh, I uh, has I has can't. just oh, yeah. barely crossed uh, the, the 400 million threshold. Avatar already? Wow. Already, yeah. So, but very expensive. I could have sworn the Batman made. More, oh, that's probably overseas. Me, more than that. Yeah, uh, so we're looking Dr. Strict, Strange. Strict, uh, strict, strict, strictly at, at at domestic growth. Now, uh, a lot of people saying, you know, you know, if you if, like, you feel free to read as much articles as you want on this stuff. You can find differing opinions. Sure. Um, you can find people who who are encouraged by this. People who are discouraged by this. People who will say there just wasn't enough offerings. Like there weren't enough movies, so it wasn't so much that people didn't want to go to the theaters. It's just there weren't enough options or films to see. Um, and you can see some of that buoyed out. It's actually a pretty strong top end, very top endy. Um, and then we look at 2023. There's a, a big slate of like tent pole films coming out. You got multiple, like we get, we're getting three MCU feature films. We're getting, you know, we're getting Shazam sequel. We're getting a, a you know, a Creed three. We're getting a new mission impossible. We're getting, um, a new mm-hmm. uh, Fast and the Furious. We're getting a new uh, Scream movie. We're getting a so there's a bunch of like just like tent pole franchises um, that are coming out in 2023. So people are pretty excited in terms of like that box office boom. So my prediction, because I am a negative 
person about the movie theaters <laughs> is that <laughs> there will be less movies in 2023 that make 400 million than there were in 2022. And that overall, we are never less? getting less. There was four, four. If I asked you how, what, how much uh, the last Mission Impossible movie made domestically, what would your guess be? When did it come? It, uh, 2018. 2018. I don't know. 700,000? 700 million? Uh, 700 Mission Impossible million, yeah. dom domestically made 220 million domestically. Damn. Worldwide, wow. it made 791. So in order for that, this new Mission Impossible to cross over that 400 million threshold, it's essentially got to do twice as much as any of the other Mission Impossible movies in the theaters, which is a we've, big, we've got, wow. big We've got Ant-Man, we've got Guardians 3. Yeah, and how much, how much do you think the last Ant-Man made? Also in the low, <laughs> also in the low 200s. And the first one was in the ones. And so in order for that one to cross the 400 million threshold, it's got to double, double what it's done in the past. Now, Guardians of the Galaxy started, the first one's like a 330 million. Second one was like 380. I think that one's going to cross four. Uh, but other than that, I'm not, I mean, Avatar's going to, if it keeps, the legs keep going, maybe it'll get four in 2022 and four, 400 in 2023. But outside of those, I'm not sure anybody else gets there. What about Indiana so, Jones? Indiana Jones, I, I do not, I think it's going to be bad. So... So I think it's going to probably be a little bit like Crystal Skull, but uh, if you want to just compare it to the Crystal Skull, is that kind of what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was so Crystal Skull was 2008, so it's a little bit you know, yeah. and it was it did do 317. Huh. So wow. so I so I'm just I'm and and I'm I'm leaving wiggle room. So if Indiana Jones happens to be spectacular. Uh, you know, I, I, if we were doing this list last year, I probably would not have pegged Top Gun to make 700 million. Uh, I would have probably put that on the, I probably would have taken the under on 700. So I, there's going to be a couple that I'm wrong, but there's no way we're getting five. I just don't see it happening. And I think overall, the days of 11, because, okay, so just to kind of put it in, in a reference. So pre 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015, all crossed 11 billion. So, and then the previous years, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all were 10 billion. So a steady climb, 2008, 2007, you can just look at it, nine, 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 eight, eight, you know, it's all, it's just kind of like increasing, you know, as, cause everything's getting more expensive, right? So, so prices keep going up, movies get more expensive. People go see the movies, movies make more money. I just, I don't think we're ever getting back to double. I don't know if we're ever getting back to double digits and certainly this year we're not. So my prediction, we're going to hover around that 8 billion for the year and that there's going to be less than four movies that make 400 million or more. And it's going to be overall a kind of meh year in terms of money. But there's going to be a lot of movies that make like 200 and, and, and they're going to be great movies. I'm not saying that movies aren't going to be great. I told you I got 10 movies I'm excited about. But like, like Into the Spider-Verse, 200 million. It's first time. So it would have to, again, have to double to beat that 400. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think Mario is going to get to that 400. Uh, you may see some movies get to that 300 mark, but that 400 million mark is hard to get to. Uh, so that's my prediction. Ooh. I like that prediction. It's a good well, it's thought out. prediction. Thank you. And I'm ready to be wrong. <laughs> so because I, well, if I'm wrong, that means the movies are great and everyone's going to see movies. That's a good thing. So, Hey, yeah. I'm hedging, hedging my bet. So I had two that I was going between and I, I, I wound up choosing one, but my, the other one that I didn't go with, that I'm still really curious to see is that I was going to say, I was going to predict that the DC movies were going to outperform the Marvel movie. This year? Yeah. <laughs> Probably won't happen. Oh, bro. Oh, oh, oh bro. Do you, this do you year think, is still the Snyderverse stuff. It's not like it's the, the new Flash stuff. Do you think the Flash is going to be successful? I think the Flash is going to be a bomb. Do you, do you think people are, are going to... Ezra Miller's Flash movie? The, are people going to watch that? I think people are going to go out of curiosity. I mean, unless it gets horrible word of mouth, in which case it's just going to die a pain. All right, so you, so you, so you think uh, Sh Shazam and... <laughs> Flash, and then what the 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 beetle, blue beetle, are going to outperform. Well, this was the one that I didn't choose. This was the one I didn't choose. 
Okay, but it's I'm just put in terms. Good. They're outperforming Ant Man, a... the Marvels, and Guardians of the Galaxy three. Is that okay? Okay. Oh, bro. Oh, bro. It's not, it's not oh, your official geez. prediction, but I'm tucking it. It's away not my official prediction. I've just thrown it out why there. Why would you even think? In that, case you're bro. right, we'll why break, you can, would you think bring it, it back up? Because I, I was trying. Because I was trying to think of some bold predictions, right? That's some some things that would qualify. That would be a bold prediction. Some things like that it. that would be fun to talk about. But my actual official prediction. Okay, okay. Let's get the official. Is one. that the Super Mario Brothers movie will have higher critic and audience Rotten Tomato scores than Sonic the Hedgehog? The first one or the second one? The first one. Okay, let's check out these scores. All right. Or did you or do you have them on hand? No, I don't have them on hand. Okay. I I wonder if this Mario Brothers movie is going to I mean if this is going to come out and people are actually really going to like it, right? if it's going to come out yeah, and it's going to be I like, question, I question that highly actually like a, a really good movie. Right? It's, it's being done by the illumination group. They make good stuff. Um, and I know that the, there's always kind of been the, the Mario versus Sonic thing. And so I thought, you know what? It'd be fun to compare the Mario versus the Sonic. I know the Sonic movie. People really like the Sonic movie. And I really like the Sonic movie. My kids really like the Sonic movie. It's a great movie. But I wonder. Wonder. Mario Brothers. All right. Well, as far as the critics score, it wouldn't take much. So it does have a tomato meter of 63%. Uh, but the audience rating was a 93%. So, okay. Okay. 93. 93. Well, and that's why I said both, because I didn't want to choose one over the other. It's going to be, I'm going to say both. So for, for my prediction to come true, it's going to be better both? than okay. Critic and the audience score. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Not both Sonics, but both both scores. Okay. Yeah. Oh. The, the Son Sonic the Hedgehog 2 had a 96 audience score. So you're, you were right to choose the, the first Sonic. Yeah, I just wanted to go with I wanted to compare the first one with, with I'm assuming, will just be the first of multiple models. Uh, Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 has a 69 tomato meter and then a 96 audience score. It's good symmetry. Well done. Well done, critics. But yeah, I don't know. I think Sonic movie. I think Mario could come could kind of come out of out of all these this criticism. I someone so, someone posted a video about how uh, Chris Pratt's voice that he does for Mario sounds like Linda Belcher from Bob's Burgers. And it's like all I can hear now is is when he's talking. It's like, oh, come over here, Bob. We're gonna make burgers. And it's like, so it's uh, if you if you've watched Bob's Burgers, put put watch a little bit, listen to Linda, and then watch the trailer again, and then imagine, imagine Linda being Mario. So. All right. Well, that's that's my prediction. That's that's everybody's prediction. These are our talk talk. Pop the champagne and let us know. What you think is going to happen in 2023? Drop some predictions in the comments. Let's hear your bold or not so bold predictions. I think we may we may have gone in order of boldness there. <laughs> Probably. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, we always love sharing uh, a, a year with you guys. 2022 is magic, and we look forward to a whole another year right here with you at Talk Top Punch. If you enjoyed this, make sure you click on these videos below so you can see more of our content. And below that gorgeous beard, hit that like and subscribe button. You want to you show a little leg, bro? Show, them what show, show the people at home a little leg candy. It's snowing outside and I'm wearing shorts. Oh, look at those. <laughs> look at those stems right there. It's beauty. Ice bath for Brody. Let them know in the comments. We want to see in a bath. We'll see you next time. <laughs> also, if you guys remember, we did a mailbag episode recently. You can email oh, yeah. us questions at talktalkpunch at gmail.com. And maybe we'll do another mailbag episode. We'd love to answer those Let's questions. Put that, in, put that in the beginning next time. So everyone's gone now. Everyone's gone. Well, if <laughs> you heard that, you, email. except for you, you're watching this. So you're you're one of the you're one of the good ones. You. All right. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye.